Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Muli kayo po ay inaanyahan namin sa isa pang talakayan. Ngayong gabi, we will have si Professor Mario Ignacio Niclad. Siya po ay isang China Studies expert at uh, isang aktivista. Yung pong aming generation, in a way, is a kind of social history doon sa kanyang kwento. Uh, yung mga dinaanan po natin, yung mga panahon yun, kasama po sila doon sa kasaysayan na yan. So, we would like to invite you especially sa talakayan with him uh, shortly. But before that, we would like to especially uh, pause a little bit na magkaroon po tayo ng bagong pananaw muli na galing sa scripture. I'm sure many of you would like to have uh, some biblical reflection, no? tungkol sa mga inahanap natin ng mga issues. So we would like to begin uh, by, by uh, thinking through some of the biblical perspectives na kailangan natin magagapa. No? Uh, a social activist, uh, yung generation namin ni Mario, uh, maraming mga bagay na dinaanan kami, pero at the same time, maraming mga lessons, no? mga learnings na na kailangan natin panghawakan bilang mga Kristiyano. Ang una na po dito is yung tanong na how exactly do we uh, effect social change? How do we exactly make a difference in the world? Uh, kung yung pong aming generation ay eh, mukhang medyo nagkamali ng kaunti no? tungkol sa uh, paano natin titingnan yung yung uh, ating ating uh, kailangan gawin no bilang mga Kristiyano. Can, can I have yung ating presi? Uh, so, meron po kami bagong technology ngayon na we are trying to experiment yung presi. And dahil ako po ay uh, hindi masyadong marunong sa <laughs> sa technology Uh, ako po ay kailangan bigyan ng ayuda sa panahon ito pero mahirap yung maging obsolete ano so in generation namin ni Lamario uh, kailangan yata na matuto no how to do this uh, in this uh, day and age ng digital na media so we would like to uh, especially do some reflections siya sa pong series ito On Luke chapter 4, ito po yung uh, Temptations of Jesus. Dahil dito po sa temptation na ito, makikita natin kung ano po yung mga bagay na kailangan nating panghawakan. No? Uh, when we are trying to effect some kind of change, pwedeng institutional, pwedeng sa society, pwedeng sa governance, and so on. Uh, ang una-una po, dito sa Luke chapter 4, in temptations to Jesus. This is a very familiar passage, you know. Uh, as sa tingin ko, ito po ay tumutumbok doon sa tanong na how do we go about making a difference in the world? Yung pong ano dito, sinasabi sa atin ay uh, yung, yung text na ito comes be before yung beginning ng kanyang public ministry, yung dinatawag na na kanyang uh, manifesto, yung kanyang programa, no? uh, what he is about, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then, meron ding dun sa, ano, maintindihan din natin na yung text nito comes before, you know, uh, or after yung baptism niya, where he, in, uh, dun sa baptism niya sa Jordan, sinabi ng Diyos na siya ay uh, anak ng Diyos, you know, with whom I am well pleased. So, matatanong natin yung isang isang uh, katanungan dito which uh, because ako po ay English major din. One of the things that uh, actually was a was a great uh, perplexity sa akin ano kasi yung paradise regain ni Milton, si John Milton. Ang kanyang focus doon yung istorya ng temptation, hindi yung Uh, istorya ng kanyang cross, yung crucifixion, then the resurrection, ganyan. Yung Paradise Regate, nakafocus lang dun sa temptations. So, I was wondering, sabi ko, ano ang kahalagahan noong temptations na yon, in such a way na parang dito nakasalalay, no? In other words, yung, 
in the inner struggle of this one man, Jesus. Parang the fate of the world hung in the balance. At nung pina, tinitinan ko na yung ano na yon malaking epic poem niya, nakita ko na, oo nga pala, doon nagsisimula yung kanyang uh, salvific na word, if you like. No? Dahil totoo nga na kung siya ay uh, bumaliktad no? doon sa gusto ng Diyos sa kanya and, and really listen doon sa mga temptations, we could not have been saved no? uh, as, a, as a world under sin. So ito po yung uh, <clears throat> napakahalaga na maintindihan natin yung mga temptations. Ano? And I think temptations pa rin natin ngayon. Uh, may mga scholars who say yung temptations that were ways of achieving his messianic task without the cross, no? Uh, you give people bread, yung mga feeding miracles, no? Hindi lang uh, kahit ang mga Christians, minsan meron tayong notion na bigyan mo ng bread yung mga tao, you know, yung reduce poverty, etc. And, and somehow, uh, things will get better. Hindi rin po yan necessarily mangyayari. And then of course, some of us think na if we ascend to power, no? Karoon tayo ng, uh, and ng Isaac particularly wants us to to be to insert ourselves in political space. At tama rin din po yun. Uh, pero hindi rin po yan talaga sagot doon sa tunay na pagbabago na gusto natin. No? Dahil maraming nag-ascend na sa power, nagkaroon ng strongman rule, pero wala namang nangyari. And then, Pwedeng sabihin din na baka kasi hindi tayo marunong ng signs and wonders. No? Dapat siguro man, kailangan ng Himala. And we, we will talk about all three temptations um, itong series na ito. Uunahin po natin yung temptation to simply give people bread. No? Um, so ito po yung una. Makikita po natin na it was the Spirit who led Jesus to the desert. Uh, he was full of the Holy Spirit, sabi rin sa Luke, no? And hindi po ito parang aksidente. Parang it was a very purposive uh, trial period para sa kanya. Sa, sa tingin ko, hindi, hindi po aksidente na he was, hindi lang siya napadpad sa desert. It was very purposive na trial ng kanyang spirit, no? It was the Spirit who led Jesus to the desert. And at the end of 40 days, sabi, he was hungry. No? Um, so, mukhang dito, we are seeing, first of all, dun sa temptation na merong appeal una-una sa kanyang messianic identity. Kaya sabi ni Satan, if you are the son of God, huwag ka ba tunay na anak ng Diyos? Kasi yun ang sinabi sa kanya eh doon sa baptism niya sa Jordan you are my son in whom i am well pleased no meron ganung affirmation ng Dios so sabi ko kung kahit na tunay na son of god make a feeding miracle no tapos noon sinasabi din na kailangan sabi ganyan kung ikaw ay tunay na somebody who really pleases god then you fulfill itong isang napakahalagang part ng iyong messianic task. No? And it is true, true, totoo rin naman, na part ng messianic task yung feeding people. No? Uh, yung poverty reduction ng ating mga kapatid na nasa mga NGO. No? Yung, yung pagpapagal ng marami sa ating mga kababayan tungkol sa paano masusolusyonan yung poverty. It's a very It's a very important messianic task. Part yan ng Luke chapter 4 din uh, nung sinasabi niya yung kanyang manifesto. So, and, and that also uh, affirms yung kanyang sonship, ano, yung kanyang messianic uh, position sa, sa Diyos. Ngayon, nag-appeal din yan sa kanyang humanity. No? Uh, sabi, you, you tell this stone to become bread. Kasi sa totoo lang, because he's very hungry na rin. No? Uh, yung experience ng deprivation, minsan napakahirap niyan. Uh, Sab tayo ng mga middle class, halimbawa, minsan natitest din yung ating ability to sacrifice, to be deprived of certain things, no? for the sake of things that we would like to do. Uh, kaya dito, 
alam na alam ni Satan na gutom siya. So sabi niya, meron ka namang kapangyarihan to turn stones into bread. Bakit hindi mo gawin yun? Both for yourself as well as for the millions of people who are hungry. Um, makikita rin natin dito na yung, yung temptation na to was very real kasi gusto rin ni, ni Jesus to show compassion. Makita natin yun sa mga yung feeding of the 5,000. Ano? He was uh, prepared to you know, kahit na nasa ilang sila na, na lugar. No? Makikita natin yan sa John 6, makita natin sa Matthew. Kahit na nasa lugar sila na mahirap talaga to feed people, sabi niya, you give them bread, sabi no? You feed them. So in other words, um, si, si Jesus understood na part siya ng masayanig task niya. But at the same time, he was always moved by compassion. No? At the same time, alam din niya na this cannot be made the reason for him to become a king. No? He refused to be made king simply because of bread. Makita natin yan sa John chapter 6, verse 15, pagkatapos ng feeding of 5,000. Yung mga tao gusto siya, they wanted to what? Forcibly take him and make him king. Uh, parang kailangan, you know, yung, yung so umalis, umalis siya dun eh. He, he, he left the crowd, he went to the mountain and prayed. And I think it was a real temptation. Na just because nagkaroon siya ng feeding miracle, you know, all these 5,000 uh, men. By the way, hindi pinibilang yung mga women and children. So it's possible na hindi lang 5,000 yun, baka 15,000, ano. And dahil bilib na bilib yung mga tao sa kanya with this miracle, gusto niya, they wanted to make him king. Pero he refused. In fact, uh, he went away from the crowd and went and prayed. Siguro minsan kapag tayo ay nalalagay sa isang sitwasyon ano na very tempting very tempting na kasi it's within your power eh, to feed feed the poor feed the, the masses of people around you at maganda namang gawin talaga yon because that's part of your messianic task pero sabi ni Jesus you do not come to me because of bread ito po yung uh, isa rin na kailangan maintindihan din natin ano, kung bakit temptation ito. Sabi niya, later, sabi niya, no, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves. No? And si Jesus knew that a man will bow before the hand that feeds him. At sa totoo lang, alam natin to intuitively. Kaya those of us who are enamored with feeding programs, ano, sa tingin natin, Dahil sa feeding program natin, people will come and bow before Jesus. Now, ang problema niyan is that we tend to develop mga rice Christians lang. Ano? People come because kailangan nila yung pagkain. And sabi ni Jesus, I don't like people to come to me simply because of bread. Not because of this sign of what? Feeding them. Because in the first place, he really is God who is worthy to be worshipped, even without bread, no? Um, so, ano, is, ano ang sinasabi ng istorya na ito sa atin? Unang-una, it is true na, na people get impressed, no, by feeding miracles. Kaya si Mark, salimbawa, nung sinabi niya na all civilization, all culture, you know, ang substructure niyan talaga is material forces, namely economics, no? Uh, <clears throat> totoo rin yun. In other words, uh, hinyo ng economics is a very powerful force in human society. That is the reason why it, itong mga congressman natin, no? they line up no? kapag whoever has the levers of power, which is yung, uh, yung sino yung may kapangyarihan na magbigay ng kanilang mga 200 million na PDAF no? para sa kanilang mga distrito. In other words, yung sino man, ang economics is a very powerful force. In fact, ang feeling ko, more than politics, no? Ang politics simply gives it power. So, and that's also the reason why si Mao Tse Tung is, is revered by many Chinese, no? And also revered even by our generation. Yung generation namin, eh, kwan eh, ang tawag doon, 
bilib na bilib sa fact that he was able to feed you know 800 million Chinese no wala nang masyadong famine although marami rin siyang socialist experiments na medyo uh, failures no massive failures pero meron kang respect do sa mga tao na economically can do something and that's why si Mao Zedong tsaka itong communist party very weird. And ang ngayon, very powerful sila sa Chinese society because of economics. No? Now, but at the same time, dapat maram, malaman din natin for our, for ano, sabi ni Jesus, while economics is a very powerful force, no? Motivating force. Man does not live on bread alone. Dapat uh, anuhin natin ito na if we are truly people made in the image of God, we cannot live with bread alone. No? Um, maraming mga young people na yun, or sa suicide, kahit na marami silang pera, bakit? Because you really do not live by bread alone. Hindi, kahit na meron kang, meron kang uh, stable, no? Na economic uh, base. The truth is, kailangan ng mga tao more than bread. Hindi naman sinasabi ni Jesus na, na you do not live without bread. No, it is not enough. It is not, bread alone is not enough. At I think yung tayo ng mga nasa mga faith-based na mga development agencies, na, no, I think we need to realize na we should not use economics to entice people to come to Jesus. Gusto ni Jesus, the, pupunta mga tao sa kanya out of a free conscience dahil hindi yung nakaamba sa akin yung aking poverty no um, so sige na lang no we do not use our power economic power particularly to entice people to come to Jesus still sabi ni Jesus we must be people who are able to appeal to the image of God in us to sa Ano, ano yung image of God sa, sa atin? Um, kasi these days, medyo na debase na yun. Ano? Makapit sa patalim ng maraming tao. Uh, kung sino man ang may kapangyarihan, sino ang pwede magbigay ng feeding program sa kanila. Uh, I think we, we need to, again and again as Christians, learn to appeal to the best of who we are as human beings, as God has made us. Hindi yung lowest common denominator. If you're a communicator, sabi, let us ponder doon sa lowest common denominator, no? yung mass man na sinasabi. Uh, ikaw, ikaw naman ay uh, nasa social work, no? feeling uh, bigyan mo lang ng ano yan, ng bread yan, eh, darating yan sa meeting. No? In other words, we don't appeal to the lowest instincts of people. Always, importante yung we appeal to the image of God in people. At ako ang aking experience is that whether you're rich or poor, merong ano siya eh, meron siyang uh, deprivation, whether in emotional, psychological, whether in just physical. Pero, again, ang gospel has to appeal to the best of what human beings are made of. Hindi dun sa mga instincts nila for fake news, instinct to uh, spread mga gossip, instinct to, you know, to be competitive, yung mga ganyan. So it's important that we do this, ano, when we're thinking how to, first of all, behave as change agents, no, in a society, in a family, or wherever we happen to be. So ito po yung ating uh, next week, we will try and talk about yung what it means to ascend to power in a way na hindi ka nalalamon ng sistema. But for the moment, ito po, asa tingin ko ang pwede nating take away muna sa gabi ito. As we think about uh, China and the miracles of, you know, the economic miracle that it has done for the past 30 years, I think we have to hand it to them, no? Doon doon sa Chinese Communist Party, kahit ayaw natin sila. Uh, in a matter of three, four decades, they have managed, sabi nga ng isang economist, to get at least 80% of their people out of the poverty line. 
Now that is no mean uh, accomplishment, no? Um, and I wish sometimes yung ating mga political elite have the vision. Nakagaya ng merong vision yung Chinese Communist Party tungkol sa kanilang bansa. So, ngayon po, uh, ibibigay na po natin ang ating space kay uh, Professor uh, Miklat. Um, si ano po ang, ang si Marie will uh, introduce him to us and then we will listen to his stories no? of what it is like to be a social activist and somebody who has been sent by Joma no? sa China at ano yung klase ng buhay nila doon and what he has learned. So Marie? Uh, yes. Po. yes po. Happy Melba. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maraming salamat. Yes po, maraming salamat sa pag sa amin sa biblical reflection na ito. I think it's good to jump into the discussion of China how it's a superpower, not just politically but also economically with this idea in mind. Itong idea natin, itong ating key take na we will not live determined by economics alone, not by bread alone. And we want to see the image of God. Speaking of image of God, ito yung mainit natin na pinag-usapan few weeks back with Dr. Claire na matinding paalala sa atin ni Dr. Claire to be citizens of the world. And that means we need to be, to have a certain level of tolerance to others. Kahit na parang minsan, Dr. Nick, maybe you want to enlighten us later, Ah, minsan binubuli na tayo dun sa ating nine dash line, no? sa ating exclusive economic zone. But we want to see the image of God and we want to understand what is China or who is China. No, not only sa broad strokes na binigay sa atin ni Doc Claire, kung hindi, mas lalo natin kikilalanin through the story of our guest. Ito pong ating guest natin ay isang beloved na teacher. Kaya gusto kong bumati sa kanyang mga studyante. Doc Nick, we have students who are listening to you tonight. We have si Pastor Noe, who is asking, is Doc Nick there? Will he be speaking? Yes po, very shortly. We will hear him. Ang ating guest, as I said, is a beloved teacher who was given actually the UP Centennial Professorial Chair and UP Press Centennial Publication Award in 2008 on the occasion of UP's 100th or Centennial Anniversary. He became the Dean of UP Asian Center in 2009 hanggang 2011. At siya po ay may akda ng mga magagandang libro. Yung kanyang life work, which tells us about his sojourn in China. Ito, 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 ito ay isang novel, ano po, Secrets of the 18 Mansions uh, by Anvil Publishing. Ito ay nilabas noong 2010. At tatlong buwan pa lang, alam niyo po ba, ni-reprint na yan. Ibig sabihin talagang it, it, has, it, it had attraction with people. At meron din silang sinulat na libro ng kanyang pamilya entitled Beyond the Great Wall which was also published by Anvil 2006. Hindi ko na po kayo bibitinin pa. Ibibigay na po namin ang floor sa ating guest ngayon, a man with a strong mind and a strong heart. Doc Nick. You are free na Doc Nick to tell us your stories. <laughs> Kailan mag-unmute si Doc Nick? Ayun. Ay, oy, salamat Marie. Mm -hmm. Salamat din Melba for inviting me sa Isip Asap. Uh, Isip Asap. Isap. At saka sa mga nanonood ngayon. Mm -hmm. uh, well, luma na itong kwento kong maririnig niyo siguro pero uh, kasi we stayed in China for 15 years as uh, for 15 years from 1971 to 1986 panganak na ba kayo noon uh, well uh, naghanda sana ako ng pictures para diyan pero uh, wag oh, hindi na muna natin na uh, uh, tingnan yon ano uh, through our pictures i could have uh, brought you to the places we have been to during our yearly tours Alma and I, my wife and I, uh, have in fact been to China's depth and breadth from the frigid northeast to the mountainous southwest to the uh, tropical island of Hainan facing the West Philippine Sea. In fact, 
Alam niyo, we have been to all of China's provinces with the only exception of the regions of Tibet, Inner Mongolia, and Xinjiang. Uh, alam nyo, it was a most comfortable stage in our lives, materially speaking. As the Chinese uh, masses walked or biked or took buses which were crowded as you could never imagine crowded could be, we had a Shanghai car and driver who did not only fetch us to and from office, but brought us to the exclusive friendship store and the shopping district of uh, and bookstores of Wang Fu Ching. Uh, pero pag special occasions, we had our red flag or Mercedes-Benz limousine. Can you imagine that? Um, Nagbibisikleta rin naman kami, gaya ng milyon-milyon Chino, pero ang sa amin ay para lamang maglamierda ting Sabado ng hapon. Such a prince, princely life, you might think. Meron kaming Fu Yen na tinatawag o mga tagapagsilbi. Hindi lamang sa nakatira kami sa mansyon, wala rin kaming binabayarang upa sa bahay o kahit pa tubig o kuryente. Bakit ganon? Well, we were sent to China by Jose Maria Sison as part of his grandiose plan to have this official delegation of the Communist Party of the Philippines a sort of an embassy of the future People's Democratic Republic of the Philippines. Tangay-tangay namin ang tatlo niyang anak para doon na palakihin at papag-aralin. Sa isang uh, New, New Year's State Banquet nga, personal kaming nilapita ni Premier Cho Enlai at iba pang uh, top communist uh, officials gaya ng asawa ni Mao Zedong na si Chang Ching at ng kanyang gangmate na sina Wang Hongwon, Yao Wenyuan at Chao Chung Chao at nakipagtaw sa amin ng Mao Tai, yung kanilang special na alak. Nakipag-Inglisan uh, sa amin si Chow and Lai na ah, ipinag... Ha? Marunong Oo. Siya mag- Marunong siya mag-Ingles. Nagulat si Chang Ching. Pero napansin naman ng asawa ni Premier Cho na medyo mal- pregnant si Alma. Hinawakan niya ito sa kamay at uh, pinayuhan na mag-ingat lalo't kasagsaga noon ng winter. I told our interpreter how I missed our uh, comrades fighting in the Philippines. Sabi niya, each one had a duty to fulfill for the revolution. The duty of our comrades back in back home was to annihilate the enemy. Ours was to annihilate everything that was being served to us at the banquet table. <laughs> Kaya yun daw ang i-annihilate namin. May kumukuha ng aming uh, maruruming damit at nagpapalit ng beddings. Uh, hanggang ipasya ni Alma na kami na ang maglaba ng sariling damit. Pati si Maningning tinuroan niyang mag- maglaba ng maliliit na bagay. At one point, we also volunteered to do manual labor in the communes, unaware of the fact that it was now being used as a sort of gulag archipelago for political, uh, politically incorrect behavior. Makikita nyo, 
we belong to the political elite of Beijing as followers of Mao Zedong thought. At least once a year, usually twice, we went to we went on tour uh, to uh, to on tour to vacation vacation spots on the beach or educational visits to the to historic spots more often than not staying at exclusive villas or hotels for high ranking officials and cadres alma and i also work as foreign experts at the ministry of radio film and television broadcasting propaganda tracks to the Philippines. Isang araw, nagkasakit ang head ng radio office na si Kuo I Ching. Gusto ko siyang dalawin sa ospital. Kasi kami, as foreign uh, comrades, we were sent to a well-kept section of the San Lingyao Hospital at the site at the sign of the slightest uh, colds or fever. Pero si Kuo, nasa dorm niya lang pala sa maliit na kwarto. Noon lang kami nakapasok ni Alma sa napakasikip palang tirahan ng kaopisina naming Chino. In our 15 years, we experience a world undreamt of by the ordinary Chinese masses. For there has always been two Chinas, China of the elite and China of the masses. In feudal times, the ruling Manchu and the ruled Han, or the Mongols earlier and again, vis-a-vis -vis the Huns. And throughout the ages, the Mandarins and the, Ch and the China of the illiterate common people. And in the past 50 years or so, Maoist China versus post-Mao China. The first was that of a poor and backward China under the ultra-leftist Maoist era as officially referred to now by the uh, subsequent China of today, which is rich and powerful, ruled by the post-Mao political elite of state capitalist, yet is still officially running the People's Republic under the dictatorship of the Communist Party. Naabuta namin ang dalawang China. Sa kalagitnaan, nabago. Our experience in China served in good stead when we returned to the Philippines because si Alma uh, nakapagtrabaho hanggang maging uh, senior vice president sa Makati Yung anak naman namin, uh, natuto ng Chinese painting, ng poetry, naging trilingual poet, si Maningning. Pagkatapos yung isa namang naming anak ngayon, eh, after graduation, uh, gra uh, taking up master sa, sa New York, eh, ngayon eh, assistant professor sa, sa UP at uh, siya ngayon ang artistic director ng Dula ang UP. Sa pagnanasang magkaroon ng foothold sa Southeast Asia, unang tumaya ang China sa nanghihina uh, na noong mga Communist Party sa Indonesia, Thailand, Burma, Malaya at Kalimantan Utara, pati na sa mas malakas na puwersa ng komunista sa Vietnam at Laos, kahit mas kampi ng mga yon ang katunggali naman ng China na Soviet Union. China rin ang uh, naging uh, main supporter ni Pol Pot sa Kampuchea. 
The Communist Party of the Philippines, CPP, whose delegation in Beijing, kami yun, were actually the latest comers. We came the last of all these uh, communist parties from Asia. Because, and we became the star of the season. Lalo na nang isispun din ni, Mar ni Marcos, ang Rita Fabius Corpus, uh, kasunod ng season instigated bombing of a political rally at Plaza Miranda. Pero hindi tumagal ang pagningning ng star na yon. Dahil sa pambubombang iyon at sa kapalpakan ng tangka ni Joma na magsmuggle sa Digoyo Point ng fake US arms na actually ay made in China sa pamamagitan ng MB Karagatan at Donya Andrea. Uh, siya nga pala, nakakalungkot at uh, dalawang linggo lang ang nakakaraan. Isa na namang testigo sa kriming iyon sa Plaza Miranda ang sumakabilang buhay, si Ariel Almendral. And then again, Chairman Mao was charmed by Imelda Marcos and for the first time on Chinese television, he was seen kissing a foreign lady's hand. Oh, oh, oh. pero of course, uh, marami ang nagpapatotoo na Mao Zedong had a harem of young women up until his dying days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Old hard. Huh? They had that. They die hard. Uh, ano yun? Mga babaeng pinipili talaga yung pinakamagagandang babae. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From supporting the CPP and PA to recognizing Marcos, such a seemingly sudden turnaround by China as regards the Philippines was actually not new. China's rich culture, especially its literature and stage plays like the Peking operas are replete with war, sex, and violence. Sinong teenager ang hindi nag, uh, naganyak magbasa ng Golden Lotus, Dream of the Red Mansions, at Water Margin or Outlaws of the Mars? O sino ang hindi pa nakakapanood ng Kung Fu at Sun Wukong movies na lahat eh tungkol sa gyera, gyera, gyera. The classic book Sun Tzu's The Art of War on how to uh, manipulate enemy kingdoms by feigning to go north but actually attacking south has been read by Chi Chinese emperors, scholars, and generals since its publication 2,500 years ago during the Warring States period. The Chinese knew it by heart for the longest time, but it was only in 1777, or 2,000 years after, that the book was translated in the West by uh, Father J.J.M. Amos, uh, and it was said that Napoleon uh, read it in his conquest of Europe. May puntirya ang China sa pakikipag-ugnayan sa ibang bansa na siya rin namang konsiderasyon ng karamihan sa mga bansa at iyon ay walang iba kundi kung ano ang bentaheng makukuha nila. Halimbawa, maraming progresibo ang napabilib ng China nang magkaroon siya ng diplomatic relations sa Chile sa panahon ni President Salvador Allende. 
di ba pinatay si Allende sa palasyo ng military junta kinabukasan ang military junta na ang kadiplomatic relations ng China ayaw kasi nitong mag Uh, mawala ang foothold niya sa bahagi niyo ng Latin America at South Pacific. Tapos, kahit galit ang mga progresibong puwersa, eh, napakaganda ng relasyon ng China kay Reza Palabi ng Iran para sa oil. Nang bumagsak ang emperor ang pumalit na si Khomeini na ang biglang naging kaibigan ng China. Dito sa atin, inassure ni President Li Xianyan si Marcos na walang ugnayan ang kanyang gobyernong People's Republic of China sa Communist Party of the Philippines. Totoo nga naman, ang kaugnayan niya noon, kaugnayan ng CPP ay ang Communist Party of China, hindi ang People's Republic. Nang buksan ang Philippine Embassy sa Beijing, siniguro na lamang ng China na hindi magkakasalubungan ang magkalabang puwersa ng mga Pilipino doon sa Peking. Kung baga, China wouldn't put all its eggs in one basket. Taliwas sa naghahanap ng father image at naibpanoong mga aktivistang Pinoy para sa sawing palad na inang bayan. At heto, heto ang take ko. Huwag sana kayong asar ha. After its expansion during the Yuan Dynasty, established by Genghis Khan and his Manchu hordes, and ruled China from 1271 to 1368, China has not colonized other countries. Why? Because it is an expensive, napakagastos na undertaking. Kaya nga ba, mas gusto nitong to subvert nations internally through various means to serve its global interests. Halimbawa, ang pagkontrol ng telco dito sa ating bansa. China's territorial disputes with Japan, Russia, India, Vietnam and the Philippines uh, the Philippines do not stop do not stop China from engaging with those countries diplomatically Japan ha huh? may territorial dispute has a robust economic and trade relations with China. So also is Vietnam and Russia. And I have not heard India totally blocking its trade with China despite their deadly uh, border clashes just last May. Bata pa ang Pilipinas, pero panahon na rin magmature sa pakikitungo sa ibang bansa mula 1946 limitado dati ang pakikipag-ugnayan natin mostly with the United States and Western Europe Carlos P. Garcia when he was president opened our country to the third world countries of Asia, Africa and Latin America para sa kanyang Filipino First Policy. Marcos opened diplomatic relations with Eastern Europe, China, and the Soviet Union. Cory, 
inspired the people to topple the 20-year one-man rule, but was unaware of the complexities of subtle diplomacy and international covenants. Kanino nga bang administrasyon ang sinasabing, ang, uh, ang nagsabi na there are no secrets in the Philippines. A country's foreign relations cannot just be a knee-jerk reaction to current events. That's why most mature governments together with an equally mature civil society call it foreign policy, hindi lang basta foreign relations. It is a nation defining its place in regional and world affairs, not a mere collection of wish list on how many Adidas shoes or Toblerone or new cell phones a teenager dreams of having next Christmas from their parents working abroad. At ni hindi rin ito bas base lamang sa tampo. It is a rational for a nation's existence in the oceanic flow of history, not just a tactical move to save our seamen afloat without a helmsman along the West Philippine Sea. Ang question ng West Philippine Sea ay question ng territorial dispute, hindi conquest. Ang ating mass media ay nagpapakahalata ng pagiging naive sa international politics tuwing ginagamit nito ang terminong disputed territory o pinag-aagawang teritoryo kapag tinutukoy ang West Philippine Sea. Panahon nang tawagin natin yon na teritoryo natin, Philippine Territory, period. Vigilant tayo dapat sa ating teritoryo kahit uh, sa paggamit man lamang ng mga termino patungkol dito. Well, sa ganito kong pananaw, magtataka siguro kayo kung bakit hindi ako friend ngayon ng China. Pero, iba na namang kwentuhan yan. Salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Doc Mick. Nako, nako, alam niyo po, I was watching the behavior of our audience. And we had a very steady audience. Lisa din talagang nakinig sila sa inyo, sa inyong kwento. Merong mga komento dito para sa inyo. Sabi ni Tubig Lesang, panahon na para magmature ang Pilipinas. And that's echoing your your insights. And of course, yung significance na na, na, na pagkakaiba, yung significant na pagkakaiba ng foreign policy at foreign affairs. So maraming maraming salamat, Doc Mick. Ito si Ayan, si Nanay, si Ma'am Alma Miklat. Hello po, Ma'am Alma. Welcome to Isip Isak. We love that you are here. Siguro ako na lang po ang magtatanong kasi walang masyadong tanong yung ating mga audience ngayon. I love it when you said that China, gusto, gusto ko po yung pagkakasabi ninyo na ang China ay hindi mag-venture into conquest kasi mag-gastos yan. Masalimuot yan. Sila mismo masasakpan yan. Kaya sinabi ninyo subversive ang kanilang mga pamamaraan. And of course, uh, nabanggit ninyo yung Telco War. I do agree with you. Kanina lamang po, nakikinig ako sa isang professor no, from King's College sa London. Nagbigay siya ng very important talk on China and how it's rising to be a superpower. Sabi niya, ngayon ngayon na lang naman naging powerful ang naval force ng China. Kaya talagang ang labanan ay virtual. Which ties very well to what you said po tungkol sa Telco. At of course, alam natin sa aming mga kabataan, sa mga kapwa ko millennials dyan, interesado kami sa 5G. Uh, there will come a time that internet will be so fast 
at yun ang gusto natin. Hindi katulad ng nakikick out tayo sa mga Zoom sessions natin. And China is actually leading the race in 5G with Huawei. Of course, competing si Samsung ni, ni, ni Korea. My question, Doc Mick, kasi sabi niya it's about time that we need to mature and be wise. You have been to China. You lived there for 15 years and you rubbed elbows with the powers that be sa bansang yan. Ang tanong ko po sa inyo is how then should we as Filipinos play the game? How then should we play the game? Napakahalaga ng sinabi niyo kanina, let's be vigilant with the terminology. It's not a disputed territory. It's declared as our territory. Thank you, Doc. Mick. Simula ngayon, ganyan na ako magsasalitan, mag-iisip. Pero ano pa po, sa inyong pananaw, yung mga... Yung da- kung paano dapat iposisyon ng mga Pilipino ang sarili natin dito sa pakikipag-ugnayan natin sa China? Oh, well, hindi naman ako uh, strate- uh, strategist. Pero kasi lang nakikita ko ha, kung minsan meron tayong mga puwersa dito sa Pilipinas. Gusto, so good, labanan agad ang China. Uh, anuhin sa United Nations na nagkaroon na nga ng arbitrary rule, ruling, gusto pang baguhin, baguhin para itakda talaga ngayon. I think, ano, strategically, what will those campaigns lead, uh, where will those campaigns lead to? What benefits can we get? Samantalang, uh, if we open ourselves to other marami, diplomatically or pakikipag-ugnayan. Nakipag-usap na ba tayo sa Vietnam, sa yung mga bansang ano, bansang meron ding uh, pakikipag uh, ano sa, sa China. Hindi tungkol sa ating relasyon ng dalawang bansang halimbawa Vietnam at Pilipinas o Japan at Pilipinas, kundi pwede namang pag-usapan ng ating mga opisyales sa mas sikretong paraan, ano ang mga ginagawa nila? Bakit magtataka ka sa Japan? Kaaway nila sa ano ha, sa dagat. Pero aba, pinakamalaki nilang diplomat uh, ano, economic pa, halos uh, ka, uh, mapantayan ng United States sa pakikipag-ugnay economically. Ganun din ang 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 Vietnam talagang nagduduroan at saka yung ang India. Bakit yung India naggera na sila the last May pero eh bumibili pa rin ng kung ano ang pwedeng bilhin para kung if it are those are raw materials to be used in their IT uh, industry then uh, so be it. Make use of them to not because we want they want china but because they want that their uh, industry their economy sh- uh, would also uh, flourish. flourish just as china is flourishing ano pero ngayon nga because of the covid uh, uh, problem eh uh, ano rin ang china at saka meron na ngayon because of what happened sa hong kong what's happening in hong kong gustong lumipat sa Vietnam ha? Uh, o sa Singapore. Yung Singapore, na, na bigla ko lang naalaala. Alam mo noon, uh, noong unang mayroong darating na, na basketball from China uh, group, maglalaro sa, sa Singapore, natatakot yung mga pinuno ng Singapore. Kanino papalakpak? itong mga Singaporean, samantalang ang mga tatay at nanay o lolo't lola nila, lahat pinanganak sa, sa China. Pero nakita na Singaporean sila. Yung Taiwan, call themselves sometimes China. Pero, pero, sa harap ng China, lalabanan nila ang China. Diba? Hindi ko mo nakikipag-ugnayan ka sa China, eh, Chinese Chinese ka na, di ba? Ginagamit nila yung mga paraan para lalong mapalakas ang posisyon sa harap ng China. Ayun. 
Thank you, Doc Mick. Alam nyo, na, naaalala ko parang nag-reverb yung uh, sinasabi ni Prof. Clarita noon sa amin, ni Dr. Clarita, na uh, laruin natin yung makipag... Let's have, let's have a dialogue at laruin natin. Makisayo tayo, hindi yung uh, tama nga kayo, hindi masyadong uh, palaban, masyadong uh, pasugod ka agad. Maging matalino at maging mapagmatiyag at makipag-dialogo. Meron pong comment dito, babasahin ko lang Doc Mick, si Leonil, sabi niya, 5G or this internet technology is the new opium of the masses and the CCP knows this that they can, that they can, and they could control the market and will use it to dominate and appeal to the masses and influence other countries' policies to their favor. Thank you, Kuya Leonil, for this insight. May tanong pong maganda si Ma'am Ruth Mabanglo. Sabi niya, medyo tingnan muna natin dito sa ating teritoryo. Sabi niya, ano ang masasabi po ninyo, Doc Mick, sa 28,000 na turistang insects na visa ay mag- nagpapabalik-balik dito? Ayun. At siguro dagtag ko na din dyan yung lumabas sa balita. Yung mga libo-libong 35 year, years old na retirees. Baka na, nakita niya na din sa balita. Ayan. So what's your take on this, Doc Mick? Ayun, eh, talagang kalukuhan ng mga Pinoy na nagpapa bayad nagpapa uh, ano ito bigyan mo lang ng pera ha lagay Lag- mm-hmm. lag- lagyan lang nakalimutan na ang interes ng bayan ha ay totoo po marami rin naman tayong kapit uh, mga kababayan na hindi naiisip at all ang kapakanan ng uh, bansa basta yumaman lang talagang magpayaman lang yun nga ang sabi ko napakabata pa natin ang isip natin, uh, mas malakas na isip, pamilya lang, o kapitbahay lang, o ganito lang, ha? yung katribo lang. Hindi naiisip yung kapakanan ng bansa sa mga aksyong ginagawa. At marami talaga sa atin nakakaiyak. Hindi pa malakas sa atin ang pag-iisip na nasyon, nasyon bayan. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ayun. Thank you, Doc Mick. Paalala yan, no? Na hindi, wag natin silang isisihin. Tignan din natin yung mali natin. Hindi pa tayo nagmamature. Sabi nga, in order to mature, sabi ni Tubig Lesang, or Lasang, sabi niya, we need to work on our verb, our inner power, our sophistication, and, of course, to think of our nation first. Tanong po naman ito ni Dr. Sally Diaz, Doc Mick, and maybe uh, I will end with this so we can give the floor to Ati Melba. Sabi po dito ni Doc Sally, what is your take, Professor, regarding China's seemingly attempts to militarize or bully or take Taiwan? Siguro dagdag ko na din, yung mga ibang ka, uh, ibang ka, ka-territorial dispute nila. Uh, ano ang take ninyo, Doc Mix, sa seemingly na pambubuli at paggagamit ng kanilang strong military arm? What is your reading of this po? Eh, yung, yung Taiwan, Chinese ang culture din nila, di ba? Alam nilang makipaglaro ngayon ano sila uh, lab, laban na laban no may pagkakataon aba uh, noong kinakailangan nilang uh, tumaas ang economic uh, uh, recovery nila eh yan nakapag-ugnayan ng mas malapit ngayon eh ibang ibang puwersa ang ang nananalo sa Taiwan ang labanan yung mga action na yan ng ng China ah uh, ang Taiwan ay ano talaga namang formosa siya ano bago naging Taiwan ano ibig sabihin nag, nag naging nagkaroon siya ng konsepto bilang isang entity bago man sila sakupin ng China ano at lalo na nang dumating ang Kuomintang noong 1949 doon sa isla na na na, na overwhelm ng Han Chinese yung mga uh, native Taiwanese no pero ngayon pinalalakas na rin sa Taiwan yung ka- characteristically Taiwanese culture ha na uh, na more of the Pacific Southeast Asian uh, culture kaysa emphasize yung kanilang pagiging Chinese, di ba? Eh, ganoon. Eh, hin- biro mo, ilang taon ng tinatakot ng China yung Taiwan? Susugurin. 
isang talon lang daw nila ay malulubog ano malulubog yung Taiwan oh, pero wala naman silang magagawa ha wala silang magagawa hindi talagang hindi at magagalit din ang ang international community sa China lalo kung ganyan ang gagawin niya sa Taiwan kaya ano lang yan giri girian oh Mm-hmm. Tama. At tignan din natin, magandang paalala po yung binigay ninyo sa atin kanina. Tignan din natin kung paano talaga yung pakikipag-ugnayan nila. Maaring front na medyo may medyo abrasive, pero deep inside. Mga magkakarabing elbow sila pagdating sa ekonomiya at iba pang interes ng mga kanila, kanilang bansa. Tama siguro yung inyong payo sa amin, Doc. Isipin natin yung ating interes. Bilang bayan, hindi lang yung personal na interes. Pahabol na tanong na po. Hindi ko lang pwedeng hindi pagbigyan si uh, Denida Manansala San Luis. <laughs> medyo, medyo, medyo pa off trajectory na tayo sa, relation, sa, sa, sa usapang uh, in, uh, foreign relations. Pero ito tanong niya po tungkol sa COVID-19. So sa inyong hinahap lang naman daw. Regarding COVID-19, what do you think about this? Is this created or is this a real natural virus that came out of nature? <laughs> hindi ako ako do- I, I don't want to indulge this question and hear from you our Chinese, Chinese expert oh, 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 oh. pero ano bago ko po ibigay kay ate Melba pero parang ano parang nakakasuspecha talaga na may ginawa ang China na eksperimento noon kasi sinisikre sinisikre sikreto nila noong January o even earlier than January yung mga ginagawa nila tungkol sa sakit na ito no Ah, uh, yeah. Nakaka nakaka nakakaduda. Nakakaduda. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Ayun, so to answer our audience, hindi lang po kayo nagdududa. Pati ang ating eksperto na si Doc Mick, nagdududa din. He's also sharing your doubts. Okay, speaking of sharing, dito na po tayo sa pagtatahi-tahi o paglalagom ng ating mga napag-usapan ngayong gabi. Doc Mick, Ma'am Alma, maraming maraming salamat. You're truly one of our most pleasant guests. So, Ate Melba, please take the floor away with your integration. Salamat. Uh, thank you, Doc Mick, no? uh, sa mga paliwanag tungkol sa lana yung cultural aspect ng China. Uh, siguro, ang unang-unang uh, maintindihan dapat natin yung sinabi ni, ni Mario na yung yung Chinese will will not uh, militarily conquer us. Um, meron akong article sa inquiry tungkol dito eh. Sa totoo lang yung Spectre of War, no? Hindi totoo yun. Kasi uh, sabi nga ni, Mar- ni Mario, actually, ang kanilang strategy is to subvert. Uh, yung meron isang isang uh, Chinese uh, uh, study expert din na nagsasabi, ang kanilang policy raw is to sinicize the natives. Kaya tinan niyo ang daming pumapasok dito, no? 28,000 yung latest uh, na supposed to mm-hmm. be and yet most of them are in their 30s, no? Pagkatapos mm-hmm. maraming, ang sabi sa akin, mga 4 million na sila dito. Dati yung Korean marami, ngayon mas marami yung Chinese na mainland, no? So, yung sinasabi ni Mario na subversive sila eh. Uh, dahil nga sa sabi nga ni Sun Chu, no, 2,500 years ago, if you can go from point A to B without fighting, do so. In other words, you break the enemy's resistance without fighting as much as possible. Ano yun eh, malalim sa kultura nila yan na, na on the one hand, sinasubvert ka nila pero, you know, very pleasant yung face nila sa'yo. Harap-harapan, ano? That's why yung sinasabi ni Mario na it's possible to to trade with them, to be in good diplomatic relations. And at the same time, sinasabot ka nila economically. No? Uh, and ang problema natin ganito, while we do have mga examples ng, ng mga bansa, kahit maliit o malaki, no? kagaya ng Vietnam, yung sinasabi niya, no? kagaya ng Taiwan, gaya ng... Uh, ng India. Uh, hindi naman 'yan nakasanda lang sa Amerika, no? These are these are countries na mayroong political will. So very interesting yung fact na meron tayong presidente 
na supposed to be ang kanyang popularity is based dun sa kanyang political will. And yet, wala siyang political will na kagaya ng Vietnam, kagaya ng, ng Taiwan. Yung Taiwan at saka Vietnam, talagang uh, yung kanilang internal na strength, nilagyan nila ng puwersa. Uh, and this is very important as some of our viewers have said, ano, kailangan merong internal na, na strength dun sa loob natin mismo. Kasi talagang ang problema natin is medyo accommodative talaga yung kultura eh. And in it has is good and bad na na ano an element ano ang good yan is we are hospitable we see yung mga foreigners as kapwa no we welcome them uh, kaya madali tayong makolonize eh. pero ang ang bad nga diyan is that we are always accommodating uh, whether it's yung mga Spaniards whether it's the among mga Amerikano o ngayon naman yung China In other words, palagi nating ina-accommodate sila. Uh, for instance, ngayon, sinasabi na bigyan sila na exemption yung mga Chinese workers working on our bridges dahil daw ito ay grant ng China. Ay nako, alam nyo sa Africa, isang malaking contemporary lesson ngayon yan. They have millions of Chinese na sa Africa. At hindi lang yun, nung, I think we need to understand na pag nag-invest ang China, kasama hindi lang yung capital hindi lang yung technology kundi yung kanilang manpower mm -hmm. uh, yung iba yung mga westerners pag nag-invest yan yung capital lang at technology no meron technology transfer dito dahil napakarami ng mga chinese ini ini export nila yung mga tao nila kaya ngayon sa Africa malaking problema na yun dahil you have all these huge chinese communities within those countries na nasa work nila economically. Kaya hawak sa liig ang so much of Africa. Eh. Sabi nga, this is the second scramble for Africa. At siya nang ginagawa sa atin. Unti-unti uh, pumapasok, unti-unti dumarating itong mga so-called retirees na actually sa tingin ko mga fifth column yan. Alam nyo, nung panahon ng hapon, sabi ng aking nanay, yun daw mga, mga Japanese, no? years bago na bam yung Pearl Harbor. Ando na sila, dahil sa Diyos sa Palawan. Sa Mindanao, sa Davao. Of course, they were running yung bakery, they were running, at mga kaibigan na nito, <laughs> breaking nga yun eh. Dahil, <laughs> mga hapon eh. Tapos suddenly, biglang, nung na bam na yung Pearl Harbor, aba, nakamilitary uniform na. At sila na yung, yung may hawak ng mga, mga military installations doon. At sa tingin ko, gano'n ang mangyayari sa atin. That's why yung telecom is unang-una. Uh, yung globe daw ngayon, halimbawa, uh, marami ng capital shares ang China. At binibigyan sila ng bagong human resource na system. In other words, yung bagong sistema ng how to deal with your staff and ganyan-ganyan. Well, one of our staff before, actually, na nag-work sa globe telecom, malis na. Kasi nga, nakikita niya yung paano yung encroachments ng China hindi lamang na ine-export yung pera, kundi yung kultura nila. Yung the way they deal with, uh, with, with, ano, with uh, people, no? with dissent, in fact. Yung kaninang sinasabi na yung ano ba kaya ang, ang kwan, connection ng China rito sa COVID, sa totoo lang, maraming lumalabas sa social media. Some of it medyo perfect. Some of it, ang tingin ko, totoo na yung Institute of Virology nila Uh, we don't exactly know what happened pero meron silang may mga experiments meant to uh, neutralize yung mga dissidents sa Hong Kong, yung mga protesters at meron din silang mga experiments para sa, sa yung tinatawag na biological warfare kaya na ano nga eh, ka, yung di ba na meron silang project that yung Institute of Virology may project with Hawaii kaya yung din ng ng uh, yung chemistry department biochemistry sa Harvard eh di kinasuhan ano all of these things in other words merong mga ganong sa tingin ko uh, kung if you put those those things together hindi aksidente na nagkaroon tayo ng covid dahil siguro it must have been a botched attempt to do yung biochemical ng mga research experiments tapos sa uh, sinasabi lang nila eh may mga mga, mga 
ano doon sa, sa sa market na ganyan wag kumain ng mga bats etc pero i think i kung if you put this, this together maraming mga mga other sources na makikita natin na connected diyan sa sa covid pwedeng intentional pwedeng hindi pero maliwanag na galing sa china at nag originate sa mga failed experiments nila so isa yon And then siguro we need to be aware yung sa foreign policy sinasabi na yung sabi ni ni, ni Mario na we need to be mature na sa policy natin. We need to grow, grow up na rin talaga. No? Uh, ang problema natin yata yung ating elite, political and economic elite. Ang dali-daling uh, hawakan ng China. Eh. Uh, I remember si Chief Justice uh, uh, Carpio when I interviewed him tungkol sa South China Sea, sabi niya, nung nag, uh, sampa tayo ng kaso no, sa The Hague, dun sa arbitral ruling, they had to make it really, ano daw, uh, secret. Kahit some cabinet members don't even know. They had to keep their cards to their chest. Sabi ko, bakit po? Kasi, sabi niya ganyan, sa buong gobyano natin, mula sa, sa mga ministers hanggang dun sa bureaucracy, may mga bayaran na dyan. So they had to keep yung to the to their chest yung yung kwan until ready na sila to file the case. Hindi nila sinasabi. Dahil sa totoo lang, yung sinasabi kanina ni Mario na this is the, the unfortunate thing, ano, daling bayaran uh, itong ating mga officials sa gobyerno. Uh, di natin alam, it's a it's a it's a paradox na you're supposed to have a strong man and yet nasa hawak-hawak sa ilong ng China. So, asan yung political will, ano? Matalan yung Vietnam, napakaliit eh, will stand up sa China. In Taiwan, napakaliit, will stand up sa China. Pero siguro yun na nga yun, yung yung call ng ating mga viewers din to make ourselves strong. Hindi tayo pwedeng kasi ang ang mga bansa naman kay maliit ka kay malaki, they will respect you eh. Uh, experience ko to eh. They will respect you basta ikaw ay strong enough in yourself. Uh, that's, it's, that's why ang scripture importante eh. Hindi yung palagi tayo nagpapalabas. Uh, palagi tayong yan, beautification nitong dolomite na beach ko no sa, sa Manila Bay. I mean, maglalagay ka ng pera sa ganon na napakaraming mga COVID na mga patients na kailangan ng tulong. In other words, yung yung gusto natin na external palagi no sila Imelda ganun din you know babakuran mo yung mga human settlements na slums no dahil daraan yung mga bisita in other words we are always thinking no na magdisplay doon sa labas and we're always accommodating yung mga taga labas bibigyan mo ng ng mga ito mga pogo bibigyan mo ng mga special treatments tapos ano ang aid na binibigay sa ating mga businessmen lalo na yung mga micro at small entrepreneurs wala in other words uh, panay lahat sa labas hindi sa loob and i think yung it is time sabi nga ng ating mga viewers na palakasin natin yung sa loob yung loob natin at ang scripture is very clear din naman dito Isang mandate sa atin is to strengthen the inner man. No? Strengthen the inner man. Ito po yung napaka-importante na, na binibigay sa atin ng Diyos. In other words, yung, yung mga external na mga palabas, uh, unfortunately, ganyan tayo eh, as a culture. No? Yun ang kailangan magbago. Gamitin ang salita ng Diyos so that yung ating internal na ano, is strong. At al- ayan, sinirespeto yan ng mga tao, okay? mayamang ka mahirap, kaya ikaw ay malaking bansa o hindi. Pag nakita nila na ikaw ay lalaban, no? Kagaya ng Vietnam, kagaya ng Taiwan, they make themselves strong enough para sila ay respetuhin ng iba pa. So ito po ang ating panalangin sa lahat sa atin sana tayo mismo bilang mga Kristiyano, we make ourselves strong na. Hindi yung very fearful tayo sa kung ano-ano, baka tayo ay lusubin, etc. Hindi ganun. Palakasin 
ang loob ng bawat isa. Simbahan at ang ating bansa. So, yun lamang po. Uh, Marie, meron ka bang mga announcements? Ay, gusto ko lang pong uh, ipaalala sa ating mga viewers ngayon na uh, kung sila ay interesado pa sa naging uh, mga kaalaman nila Dr. Mario, nila Doc Nick, at nila Ate Alma, nila Ma'am Alma sa China, pwede kaya nilang tignan yung book. Meron po ba kayo ng book ninyo, Doc Nick? Yung 18 Mansions, yung Secrets of the 18 Mansions. Ayan! That would, it's actually a novel. Kaya for sure, yan, at, at for sure, it's really unputdownable. Very hooking. Kaya uh, sa aming mga viewers, and si Doc Mick ay nagsulat din po dito no, sa To Be In History. Para mas mapalakas pa natin yung ating inner man. Ayan. Meron pa daw siya. Meron pa po. Ito yung kanilang... Uh, Mario. Family. I think it's your family, ano po, ano, family oh, yeah. project. Yung uh -huh. inyong experiences beyond uh -huh. the Great Wall. Ayan. I yung, think it's good to read those books. It will be very helpful to read those books because we need to grapple with it. No, this is China is here and it's here to stay. No, sige pa ate Mel, do you want to say something? Ah, uh, yung no. isipan libro. Well, mag ay siguro pag pray natin na ang ating bansa na lumakas tayo, no, in the inner man, mula sa atin as individuals and as a country. Sige, let's pray. Pag pray tayo. Lord, kami po ay Yes, humingi ng lakas sa inyo, hindi po sa mga makapangyarihan, hindi kami sasandal sa kahit kanino, kundi galing lamang po sa kapangyarihan ng inyong manang spirito. And Lord, we pray especially now for Mario at saka si Alma. Salamat Lord sa lahat ng karanasan na ibinigay ninyo sa kanila, sa kanilang pamilya, kanilang mga anak. Lord, we pray that you may continue to take hold of this experience and make it speak to our people at sa amin din bilang simbahan. Ano man po ang makakalap namin sa lahat ng mga, mga experience na ito, we pray that you may help us to strengthen ourselves as your church, as your people, and Lord, as a nation. Humingi po kami ng panibagong lakas, panibagong, uh, Lord, lakas ng loob para mabigyan ng <clears throat> tugo ng lahat ng mga challenges na inaharap namin. And we pray, Lord, especially for your church, that we may be those who are strong in the inner man. Para hindi po kami nasisway this way or that, at hindi po kami nasisilaw sa anumang mga enticements, sa China o galing sa kahit saan man, tulungan po ninyo kami to have the inner force to resist whatever needs to be resisted na galing sa kamay ng kaaway. So we commit ourselves to you now and we pray that you may continue to bless us and bless si Mario and Alma and their family. And thank you for all your good gifts to us as your church. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, salamat po Next sa inyo. week, we will talk about love of love for nation and love for others. So, and love for God. So, join us next week. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.